most recently we performed in St Michael's Cave, which is a stunning venue in Gibraltar. It's it's undoubtedly unique. It's a cave that's been turned into an auditorium and the acoustics are interesting. Yeah. When you're in there, it's magical. The scenery looks spectacular, the lighting's great. It's on the bucket list of things to do in this band. And we got a chance this year to uh, to play in a cave um, as a support slot for Toy Wilcox. So we recorded the Unplugged, um, which is what we were performing that night. It's been a milestone to perform there and the material that we've got, that we've showcased there, and we'll now put out across all our different social media channels and music channels. Lala speaks about drug addiction, funnily enough. I mean, you'd never know because uh, it, it's such a poppy song. Um, the actual message within the song is, is, is very serious. It talks about how, um, how you struggle with drugs and, and how hard of a time you, you go through. It's kind of <laughs> hidden meaning, which is quite cool. Yeah. <laughs> we like doing that, having, keeping some stuff for ourselves and then the audience can work out what exactly. let everyone do. Let everyone try and figure out what, what the song could mean, but in essence, that's what it means. <laughs> As a whole, I'm loving this experience. It's been nine years and I know it shows, but <laughs> it's flown by, trust me. Speak yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's flown by and I just love the whole experience as, as, as a whole. I, I wouldn't change it for the world and I hope more things come my way for sure. It's hard for me to pick out one single moment where, <laughs> where the Jets Ring became my favourite thing. There's so many things we've done. I mean, we, we went to Cape Verde twice with the band. We, we showcased the material there, we performed with big artists. Um, we also did a, the MTV Gibraltar calling show to great and rave reviews. I mean, the crowd there was fantastic. speaks about the troubles um, that this world is going through, you know, terrorism, people who are way in over their heads in powerful positions, uh, stuff like that, and just how we're, we're so sick of it, we don't need it, we don't want it, um, and we're trying to eradicate it, so the song says, free me from these chains, we just want a better world to be honest, so that's what it speaks about. is a bit like uh, training. It's a bit like training where during 
when you're doing 100 press ups or 100 lunges or whatever it is that you have to do, it's agonizing, it's horrible, but you feel great the day after. And the results, uh, although you can't tell right now, the results can be good. <laughs> the results in the recording process have been fantastic, and it's great then to hear back what um, you spent so long working towards. Mm. So I do like crafting, I like the creative part of it, but the nerves when that. Uh, when your producer or engineer says, silence, we're recording, the nerves kick in, it is quite nerve wracking. Yeah. So that's the bit like, I still never get used to it. But it's exciting. I'm always, always the last one to record, so I'm just here waiting. Then I record my part, and you have to listen to the song a zillion times. Your ears are saturated. Mm. You don't even like the song anymore. You've heard it so <laughs> many times. Like, give me a new song. But yeah, the day after you listen to it, and you think, you know what? That was that was worth it. You know, know, I think the there's, there's been moments where you, in particular, have been listening to a song while recording it, come up with a new idea, a new hook for a middle eight or a chorus, jumped in the booth and gone, let's get this down. Yeah, but. Uh, that is also the magic of being in a studio, I guess. Yeah. To be, to be honest, I mean, what I sleep was a, a co song concept that came around before we even had any lyrics for it. One of the things that uh, we had was a really cracking tune, and then over a series of months we crafted some lyrics to help fit that tune, and it ended up being called While I Sleep, and there uh, kind of is a, a, an unwritten story in there about, um, you know, you know, aspirations losing your way a little bit, and uh, kind of being blinded by the big lights of perhaps someone like Las Vegas or something like that. Um, and uh, the, the peril or the trap of things like gambling, stuff like that. That was very, very deep and meaningful, but it's kind of more, <laughs> it's more of an upbeat, fun song, believe it or not. Um, and, you know, talking about well, when, you, when you take take a risk for the first time in your life, uh, what that can be like, um, jumping in the deep end, that kind of stuff, you know, it can pay off, but you can get in a, a bit of a rapid rabbit hole, a bit of an all, you know, difficult spiral and end up God knows where you are, so... Um, it's not meant to be even meaningful, but it was certainly was a lot of fun writing. It's an absolute, you know, um, pleasure to hear stuff that you've recorded and you say, you know, that was actually me tracking those drums and yeah. I came up with that with that particular part or, or that middle eight or that was a result of developing something in, in a rehearsal room and then you record it in the studio and it's like, yeah, it, it really, really works. Yeah. So even, even more so when those recorded songs are heard by people and then sang. Yeah. at concerts like you're, you're very catchy ones like your starlights your story of my life your lala absolutely and that when you to get to a stage and you perform it and people sing back that has to be one of the best things feeling. about performing live as well oh, absolutely you know? greatest feeling where you, where you get that crowd knowing your songs and singing with you and uh, you know having that collaboration that interaction between crowd and band there's, there's no other feeling like it when you when you finish a gig we would talking about you know the, the whole process behind 
writing songs and recording, it is arduous. Yeah. And the the you know the, the run up to a concert is the same, and then it just flies by. But that elation that you get afterwards, that feeling that you get when you come off stage and you know you've transmitted to a crowd, mm. I mean, it's irreplaceable. Re recording is one thing, but performing live is a completely different monster for me. Yeah. I just feel like like the real me on stage. You know, like if if you if you saw me at work and then you saw me on stage, mm. that's the real me. The guy that goes to work. And does his nine to five. That's just the guy trying to get to the real him. So, what do you think about live performing? It's, it's, it's another level. It's one of those things that um, you forget what it's like when you're crafting day in day out in the rehearsal room in the studio recording songs. You forget that the differences you yeah. have. Yeah. You, you forget differences in opinion. You know, with where yeah. where you want to take a song and stuff. And yeah. then you're reminded why you do it when you go on stage. So the rest of the time, it is tough. It's like being a football team where you've got 11, sometimes 22 different opinions. Mm. Uh, not everyone sees eye to eye and creative differences creep in and time schedules do, uh, do clash. It's very, very difficult to get everyone synced, everyone aligned. Yes. But the end result and the moments that you share on, on stage are, you know, and those moments, I mean, I mean we talk about ourselves, but we, we sometimes forget that we're sharing those moments with an audience. Yeah, of course. And that you know, the, the audience take those memories home with them. I and mean, you know, these days they're sharing them with us on social media. We get photographs back, we get videos back, we get, you know, we get told that people are doing stuff to our songs. Mm -hmm. You know, they're falling in love to our songs, they're breaking up to our songs. Yeah, yeah. Triangle speaks about a love triangle uh, between three people, obviously, and the difficulties between managing one person against another and trying to choose basically between those two people. Juggle, 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 juggle. Or being caught in the middle. Or being caught in the middle, which might be, yeah, which yeah. is probably the worst position to be. Yeah, but basically, so it's obviously not an easier <laughs> scenario where you're with one person and then potentially messing about with another, um, it gets messy. So that's why it's not a happy song. Exactly. It's an upbeat song, but it's not entirely happy. Actually, for me, it's, it's, it's not about the stage, it's about the, the interaction with the crowd. Mm. If there's a good crowd there responding, that's it. doesn't matter it where you two, are. It could be two people, it could be 2,000. Yeah, they're responding, then I automatically respond and grow, grow from that, and I just get into the crowd and I go crazy and I get yeah. people involved. For me, it's about the crowd interaction more than anything else. Okay, guys, I think they're ready. F5 is, is a song that's very personal and dear to me. Um, it speaks about uh, an experience um, which, which was not nice. Um, and it basically it's about someone that you really care, that you really love, 
um, who sort of moves on and, and has an experience with someone else. Um, and then you find out through the grapevine. And, uh, and yeah, you just react negatively to it. And obviously it hurts, it's, it's not a nice feeling. F5 on your keyboard means refresh. So basically this, was my, this song was my way of saying, you know what, I've written this song, I've got over it now. Visions of a previous tale And my ears just came to know Again, it's, it's similar to Triangle in the sense that there's three people involved, whereas you're in a, a relationship with someone, that falls off, and then you see that person with another guy. So that she's walking down the street, holding his hand, sort of embracing him, and you see that, and, and it's basically a... The, the song speaks about the way you felt watching that girl move on with someone else. 
um, and there's no longer a you and a me. That's where the you and me comes from, you know? It's, ah, I see that. Um, way back when. Yeah, way back when. You and I. The good times. Exactly. So yeah, it's basically about that. It's been a relationship that's kind of ended. She moved on to someone else and you're witnessing that and uh, not enjoying it. But you wanted everything You never realized that If we were never meant to be It was more than you and me You lived the lie in fantasy Now there's no more you, it's just so made You say you're happy now Don't have to show me how But the way you smile one of our uh, songs we wrote not so long ago. We um, put together a little EP a few months back with a handful of new tunes and Starlight was one of the ones that um, that came out of that and uh, it was one of those ones that you know had a cracking chorus, a great melody, it was one of those ones that we thought you know what this is a melody that's got to stick in our heads, we can't get rid of it, we need to work on it, we need to finish it. Um, and then once the word Starlight fitted the tune we could not get rid of that. It was, it was only ever going to be uh, that single long Starlight line. So it was how do we craft a song that then maps into that. And I think where we've ended up with it is pretty successful. We've got lyrics that, uh, that talk about what happens when you're in a place in your life where you think, you know what, I need a bit of direction, I need a bit of guidance. Maybe things used to be better, or maybe I need a new path, and how, wh where can I find that? Um, uh, so historically, you know, travellers have used the stars for navigation. I thought, well, there's an interesting hook there. Why don't we talk about how, in a modern day, if you needed to find direction in your life, why don't you use the stars to never get you back to the good times? Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of where it came about, and it became a bit anthemic from then on.
Ladies and gentlemen, Jetstream.